Oh, we have access to Pika Labs. Oh, this is going to be epic. Well, hello, good people. There's been a lot of hype around Pika Labs 1.0, and I finally got access to it last week. I've only had a few days to play around with it, but I thought it'd be cool to explore it together. Once you've signed in, you'll be welcome to their Explore page, and you'll see some examples from previous users. Here's a scene with a lighthouse with waves crashing on it. We've got Pippi Longstocking anime style. That's pretty cool. A DC Marvel style superhero. Here's another example of a neon glowing river. This one had a really cool effect, a glowing orb that explodes with all this electricity and lightning. I've done quite a few clips that I'm going to show you a bit later, but let's go ahead and look at the interface. So here is your main prompt area. This area here is where you can input an image or video. Then this button, let's open that up. This will give you your aspect ratio. So 16 by 9 is your typical ratio. You flip that to get vertical video like for TikTok, Instagram Reels, one to one, and so on and so forth. Then you have your frames per second. Your maximum is 24. This is basically the standard for cinematic movies. And I wouldn't touch this, I would leave it at 24 so that you get the smoothest motion possible. Then the next button over is your motion control. You can pan left to right, tilt up and down, rotate left and right, zoom in, zoom out, and then you have strength of the motion. Obviously, if you bring it up to four, the motion will be more intense. At one, it'll be more subtle. And you can combine this. So let's say I wanted to zoom in with a motion of one. I can also tilt up and pan right if I wanted to. And then the last parameter here, you can put in your negative prompts. If you're familiar with stable diffusion, it's very similar. So I use things like blurry, overexposed, ugly, deformed, warped. You'll find your seed numbers here, should you want to reuse the seed for a certain scene. And then they have something here, consistency with text. It's sort of like prompt guidance or CFG. I find anywhere from 10 to 15 pretty good, but basically the lower it is, the more creative it tends to be. And the higher it is, it'll adhere to the prompt a little bit more. And then once you're done, you can go ahead and just click this button to generate the video. And in the meantime, we'll look at this shot that I did of a wolf with a mountain scene. That looks pretty nice. Here's another shot of the same prompt. I would say in terms of the text to video portion, the quality has improved quite a bit, but much like text to image where you have to generate multiple times to get a good result, that's also going to be the case for text to video. Now, when your video is complete, you do have some options. If you click on retry, you see here, it's just going to regenerate the same prompt, the same settings all over again. If you click on reprompt, it's going to load the same prompt in the settings. Therefore, you can tweak the prompt, add some things, take some things away from it. We'll look at edit in a second, but the next one you can basically add four more seconds. So you'll notice the clips are only three seconds. So if I click on this, it's going to add an additional four seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And you'll see at the bottom here, it says add four seconds. You'll have to generate it once again. And you'll also notice the initial generation is only 1280 by 720. So to get a bigger size, you'll need to use the upscale. That will also regenerate as you see here. And once it's done, you'll see the video with an upscale option. Now you can't really tell, so I'm going to download this. When I open up the file, you see the size is 2560 by 1440. So after upscale, you're getting about a 2K resolution at 24 frames per second, which is great. And if we watch it full screen here, you see the quality is much more better than the previous version. Now here's the version where we added seven seconds and you're going to see that it kind of morphs into something else. And that's one of the downsides of adding seconds to an existing clip. Depending on what it is, it may morph into something else. 
Now let me show you edit. I have a one by one scene here of a sailboat in the ocean with a bunch of waves and stuff. And when you click on edit, you'll get a couple options here, modify region or expand canvas. And when you click on modify region, you can pretty much select an area where you want to modify it. So let's say I wanted to modify the sailboat to a car or something else. I could do that. And then with expand canvas, you'll notice now I can expand the scene to a 16 by 9, 9 by 16 if I wanted to, or any of these aspect ratios. So we're going to go ahead and do a 16 by 9. I'm not going to bother to modify the region. Let's go ahead and generate that. And then you'll see the videos regenerating with the expand canvas icon on the top left. Okay, let's take a look at the expanded canvas and yeah, looks very seamless and uh, definitely a great feature to have, especially if you're doing like YouTube shorts, reels, TikTok, whatever the case may be. You could do one aspect ratio and then do another. So that's very, very useful. And to answer the question about the hype, I do think the hype is valid considering how far we've come along from the previous version. I've noticed it tends to like characters. Personally, for me, when it comes to to text to video. I find video like this with cartoon characters, it excels pretty well. Obviously it's a little difficult to control because it could be really random. Like in this example, sometimes it just feels jerky and the eyes get all bugged out and stuff. But once again, you'll have to generate a few times and also use negative prompts. It seems to be very expressive in the facial features. But as I said, sometimes you get some weird results like here where this chipmunk just freaks out for no reason. Now where it really excels is in landscape footage. In this scene, I extended it to seven seconds where it was sort of like doing a free fall and the colors are vibrant. The quality is great once upscaled and you can get some really cool b-roll type of shots. The only thing is when you continue a scene, as I said before, you got to be really careful. Sometimes the quality suffers a little bit here. As you see, after three seconds, it gets a tad blurry. And then as I change the motion, it was very abrupt. So if you're going to do some motion, you probably want to make sure the motion is seamless or at least keeping the motion strength the same. Otherwise, it's going to look just a tad jerky. For this one, I copied the prompt on the home page of a person riding a motorbike. And it's not bad. It's somewhat coherent, but the motion is still a little bit lacking there. This scene kind of turned out a little bit better, even though the motion is kind of slow. Here's a very simple prompt of an anime style. And I think the style in itself looks great. Again, controlling the motions and the movement is a little bit difficult. Here's another scene where I found really funny. If you watch, there you go. That person walks right through the window like it's not even there. But I like how this scene turned out as if she's on a train or something and there's movement in the background. I didn't do a lot of image testing, but this is an example of an image that I uploaded added a slight motion zoom. Here's a close-up of the character zooming out. And I like that the eyes were blinking. We'll definitely dive deeper in future videos, but when you're just getting started, I'd say start with some simple prompts, build them up, use your seeds, try images, try videos. It's still very new at the moment, but I can see as they update this and it progresses, Pika is definitely going to be one of the leaders in AI video. That's for sure. As always, let me know what you think in the comments below. What are your first impressions of Pika? And if you've created anything on YouTube, post the link in the comments. I'd love to check it out. Until the next video, my friends, I'll see you when I see you.